Syrian opposition activists say as many as 1,300 people are dead after government forces attacked them in Damascus. Witnesses say poisonous gas was used on the victims. All this comes as U.N. weapons experts are in Syria investigating claims of chemical weapons use. For more, let's go to New York where our U.N. correspondent Stephen Fee is live. Stephen. Well, Mike, that Security Council meeting ended just a few hours ago. It was prompted by a number of members of the Security Council, and it was done so behind closed doors. The 15 members were briefed by the Deputy Secretary General, that's Jan Eliasson. Now, of course, we're not privy to what goes on behind closed doors, but surprisingly, Eliasson went in front of reporters after those meetings wrapped, and he said that no matter the outcome of any investigation, uh, this alleged chemical weapons attack could represent a serious escalation of hostilities. He he called the situation very dramatic and said that the U.N. hopes that its weapons inspectors might be able to access the site. But he said that there were a number of roadblocks that could be in front of them, including the safety of the U.N. weapons inspectors, which has delayed the beginnings of this mission very long, but also the consent of the Syrian government. Let's not forget that these weapons inspectors are there at the invitation of Syria. So getting them to the site, even though it's about a 15-minute drive from the hotel where these weapons inspectors are staying, uh, could be a bit of difficulty. Diplomatic wrangling ahead. Stephen, uh, all things considered, does it appear an investigation could happen anytime soon? Well, as I said, there's some pretty significant roadblocks here. First, of course, the U.N. has to ensure the safety of its peacekeepers, and they won't proceed without it. And in some of the pictures that you've been showing, there is still fighting going on in this suburb of Damascus. So they'd be very reluctant to send this 20-person team in. And also remember that these inspectors are there on a previous mandate. They were there to inspect three separate sites in Syria, again, at the invitation of the Syrian government. They've only got two weeks to do so, although they can opt to extend it. And what's important here to remember also is that their mandate says that they want to discover if chemical weapons were used, but not who used them. And we got no indication today that even though the Secretary General supports an investigation proceeding, uh, that that mandate might not change. Stephen, let me ask you this. I've got a couple more questions. They always say the first casualty of war is the truth. And, and there are some people who say, you know, this is rather curious that this happens right as these inspectors get into uh, Syria that, that, that there's the possibility that this thing could be staged, that sort of thing. Are you hearing any rumblings at all like that in New York? Well, absolutely. Outside of the U.N. chambers, we were hearing reports from various missions around uh, Turtle Bay, that's the area just around the United Nations here in New York, uh, that there was speculation among some uh, that perhaps this could have been staged, numbers were inflated. Um, obviously, this has been a lot of hearsay and a lot of allegations that have been lobbed between two sides. And as you well know, pro- and anti-government forces in Syria, those who support President Bashar al-Assad and those who do not, have traded these accusations back and forth. And members of the security Security Council that have taken different sides in this conflict have often reinterpreted uh, some of the evidence that we're seeing come out of Syria in different ways. And in particular, you've seen this stalemate between the United States, which backs the rebels who are uh, attempting to oust President uh, uh, Assad, and also Russia, who has been backing that regime. So you've seen a pretty much a deadlock here. And one of the big issues with this weapons inspection, whether they're able to inspect those outskirts or not, is whether or not this investigation is just coming a little bit too late. And again, that mandate, if weapons were used, not who used them, means it's very hard to establish accountability. And that's what the U.N. Secretary General has repeatedly been calling for. But the way the mission is constructed right now, accountability doesn't really seem to be in the cards. Mm, so interesting. Uh, Stephen Fee, live force at the United Nations. Thanks so much.